If this is your first time using the tools, please watch the video on using GUI Core 1.5 Plus first. It goes over some basics that we are not going to cover in this video. This video is more about the differences between 1.5 and 2.0. So, go ahead and start the latest copy of GUI Core. If you run into a problem starting it, on Mac you may get something that says the file is damaged, it can't be started. That simply means you need to run the X attribute command on it to clear the extended attributes to allow it to, to run. On Windows you may get something saying it doesn't know who the software came from, so you have to hit advanced or about and tell it it's okay to run the software. You should only need to do that once on each platform to allow the software to run in the future. So looking here at uh, 2.0 it looks basically the same except for two primary things. One, got a light gray background instead of the stark white background, easier on the eyes. Two, there's no more mode setting. The system knows what you're doing based on mouse position and how you're using the mouse. Now one of the main things we did with this was added colors so you could tell what blocks are and what libraries are from easier. So we're going to open up a new sample program. It's called mixer underscore four underscore two underscore lshs. It should have been in the uh, zip file you downloaded and we open it up and it is basically a four channel to two channel little baby mixer. Uh, we'll go over what some of the blocks are doing in a moment but right now what we want to look at is the colors. The things like uh, the special function registers, constants, and M regs, and eventually C regs, are all fixed. We fix those colors in software. Loaded files like G underscore delay, DSP, etc., uh, you can change the color of. The color information is stored in the library file, which is really easy to edit and change. So if we go into Documents and down to the Libraries and we'll just open one up. You can see towards the top here under the name and description of the library there are two new lines. The first one lib underscore color which then is followed by three values that range from 0 to 255 so this is red, green, and blue 8-bit values so it's a 24-bit color that defines the color of the block and then live underscore text underscore color defines the color of the text in the block. So in this case we have not sure what color that is but it's a white text so it might be yeah well it's a delay block so it's not this but it's a uh, pretty straightforward if you need to find colors you're not sure what color you want to use, it's easy enough just to uh, go to Google, type color picker into the search, and that will bring up a color picker right inside of the Google search results. So you can adjust it to find the color you like, and it will give you the RGB values right there. Uh, I suggest using a slightly lighter color than you're intending because these are slightly transparent so the gray will come through. So if you want it to be a bright color go a little brighter than you uh, think and it should mute just a little bit with this gray background. But that's simple to adjust the colors. Each library has these headings. If they're missing from a library like you've developed your own library we have a default color scheme that it will use that you can then just go in and add these lines. Another thing about the new version is that you have the ability to access C registers. Now they're not listed by default. You know we have the MREG, SFRs, and constants just like we had in version 1.5 to access the C registers. Close GUI core. Go into Documents and edit the GUICore.con file. And
then just before the end we need to add a new line. This would be using the XML tag so it's a less than sign and then it's expert underscore mode greater than sign less than sign forward slash expert underscore mode and then a greater than sign to close out the tag save the file and then restart GUI core and you will see in the libraries you now have C regs available if you're not familiar with C regs the difference why you should use them I highly recommend not doing this this is really for expert level programmers that are using their own customized libraries and are taking advantage of certain structures in the code otherwise don't worry about it now let's uh, open up the um, mixer 4.2 LSHS again and one of the other things we've allowed is or we've added is the ability to select a block so just put the mouse down on the background anywhere that there's nothing press the left mouse button and drag and it will select everything within that area if it only partially catches the block it will not select the block it must completely uh, encase the block to be selected once that is done put the mouse onto any of the selected blocks press the left mouse button and you can drag it around so it makes it much easier if you need to add space in between some blocks to add some additional functionality click anywhere to clear the selection or you can right click or you could even just you know click and grab another block just to move it it will deselect all of these blocks uh, there's also logic in it so you cannot push it off the screen that way you can't lose a block outside of the editing area Now, some of the other things we've done with this, as I said, this is a four in, two out mixer. Some of the things we've done is we've using the uh, power block here. This raises an edge to a power. And in this case, we're doing it on each of the pots because we want to get a audio taper. So we're raising the pot value to the power of three we're keeping the values from the pots and that will give an audio taper rather than a linear taper you can of course easily adjust this number if you want more or less of a taper we also have added a new block called route to the utility um, library what this does is that it takes an input and it sends it out one of two outputs and it puts a zero out the unused output we control it with a switch so that uh, for instance if switch 0 is 0 it will go out the upper output which will get added to all the other signals assigned to the zero upper output which will come out out 0 lower output goes out out 1 so for each channel you can adjust the level and its routing we then come to a low shelf and high shelf now we used four pots here on the inputs and only had two left so of course we wanted to control the shelving positions with those but we need to also set the frequency normally we would have put a pot on that input through a get sfr block but here we're using an mreg we can get away with using an mreg on multiple connections because the shelving filters only ever read from the mreg so they know what their frequency is they don't ever write to it so it won't ever overwrite the value and one of the things is that when you explicitly put a register on the design you can right click it and set a preset value for it so in this case we set it to 0 0.02584 which is a corner of 200 Hertz at a 48 K sample rate over on the high shelf 0.23 was 23033 that's about a 2k corner at a 48k sample rate these values 
were calculated using the equations in application note 7. So just get application note 7, look at the shelving filters in them, and just use the equation for calculating the coefficient. Now that is basically the main things with 2.0. The differences being the color, expert mode, a uh, couple of new blocks have been added in some of the uh, libraries, uh, the ability to select multiple parts to move them, uh, some little tricks that we've been using that have actually always existed for taking advantage of things like presetting on explicitly stated M regs and kind of seen an example here that you don't have to just think in terms of reverbs and direct effects. There's a lot of things you can do with the FX core like uh, mixing and routing. Uh, any questions, go ahead, post them up on the form or email me like normal and I'll do my best to address them.